welcome blessings showing up. Thank you. <laughs> um, biology of belief. We want to talk about the biology of belief. So your beliefs came from somewhere. They didn't just come out of the blue. You know, they were gifted to you by your parents, by the people you hang out with, by your community, by where you live in the country or the world, uh, by your religion, by your, there's tons of layerings of our biology of beliefs. Sometimes we think that they're ours. <laughs> they're not yours. There are things that have been downloaded upon you that you then accepted, right? You embraced consciously or subconsciously, usually subconsciously. A conscious belief is when you really decide this doesn't serve me anymore, whatever the, this is, this belief, this way of acting, this doesn't serve me and I need to upgrade it. I need to get something that really works better, right? So our belief systems are not what we think they are. They're not like, you know, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat because I really believe this or, you know, it, how much of your belief system comes from really deep research, really deep meditation upon it? So I'm just asking you that. You don't have to answer it to anyone except yourself. You want to look at why you have the beliefs that you do and are they serving you? Are they serving your family? Are they serving your community? And the answer may be yes, but I'm willing to bet that a lot of them are old and outdated, not researched, and based on blame and shame of somebody else who's not as good as, or as bright as, or as knowing as, as the people who fed you what your belief system is. So our biology of belief literally affects our biology. That's why they can tell how certain people get certain diseases, right? And people say, well, it's hereditary. Heart attacks are hereditary in my family. Cancer is hereditary. So are the belief systems, the biology of beliefs. So are the way that you eat. So are your biology of belief. This is what we eat. This is what we, you know, think. This is what we, we meditate on. This is what we, how we act. This is, you know, we've got all these how to's that are part of your biology of belief. And it's not that easy to change. I absolutely will guarantee you that. I can't tell you how many people I have you know, said to me, just tell me what to do about this, whatever this is, usually some kind of disease or sickness or something that's plaguing them. And then you tell them they're like, oh, but I couldn't do that. You know, I, I grew up in the Midwest. I have to eat X, Y, Z, P, Q, F. <laughs> What if they're saying is my biology of belief is bigger than my desire to get well on whatever level it is. So I want to ask you to look at your biology of belief and are they serving you and keeping you healthy, happier, more whole? Or are they really taking you down a path you don't want to go down? Are they separating you out from others so that you are the good one, they are the bad one? You are the knowing one. They are the unknowing one. You are the smart one. They're the stupid one. You are other way around. doesn't matter. It's a separation technique that keeps us small and in fear and reactive. The more that you expand your biology of beliefs, the more that it's alive and juicy and you can see the other for who they are without condemning them without having to make them wrong. You can just see where they are and know that that's where they are. Not where you want them to be or where they should be or how they should think, but where they are. And when you do that, all of a sudden your neutral mind starts getting much more balanced and your biology of beliefs can serve you and those around you as opposed to separation which never makes us feel yummy it may empower you for a moment but it doesn't make you more connected the more separate and separate that we are the more alone and fearful and you know victimized that we become so i want you to look at and ask sit and breathe into just 
slow your breath down and just write down what your beliefs are about the world, about your community, about yourself, about your religion, about your way of life, about your teachers, about, you know, I was having this wonderful conversation with a friend of mine last night about integrity. Integrity means you honor everyone who has given you whatever they've given you, your parents, your teachers, all of them. Not that they're perfect. There is no such a thing as a perfect human being. And if we put somebody in the perfect category, then when they're in the not perfect category, we're devastated. So integrity means that you are willing to honor that which you have gained from everyone who has come into your life and been a teacher, whether it's a backdoor teacher or a front door teacher. And they imparted beliefs to you. If those beliefs don't serve you anymore, then you get to change them, not blame them for giving them to you in the first place. They came into you because you are receptive to them. You don't need them anymore. Cash them in for something better as opposed to getting mad and reactive at them. Okay. You want a better belief system? Hang around with people who have better belief systems. Hang around with the company of the people who will elevate you, not deride you, not debase you, not, you know, show you how crazy or wrong you are. And don't only hang out with the people who have the same belief systems that you do. Hang out with people who challenge your belief systems so that you can actually go, maybe this doesn't serve me so well anymore. Okay? And you don't have to believe their belief system. Just experience different belief systems. That's the most wonderful thing with travel is you get to experience other cultures and see like, huh, that belief system doesn't hold up at all here, right? And it may be for the better or not the better, right? I don't like to say the worst, but yes. So travel. You can't travel now physically. Travel, there's so many fantastic, you know, documentaries and videos that you can watch that you can travel and look at and see other cultures and other belief systems. And just actually modulate yours to see if it's still serving you. If it is, great. If it's not, what do you want? You know, how would you like to see the world and yourself in a more compassionate and kind and connected way. I love you.